Even though if you have no experience with microcontrollers, by the end of this video you will be able to replicate this project. Hi guys, it's Oli here. I hope you are having a great day. What are microcontrollers? Are these microcontrollers? Not really. These chips are microcontrollers. And these chips? And even this one. These are very specific chips which are acting as a mini computer. In fact, they are called RISC, Reduced Instruction Set Computer. Now, they are not reduced because they are dumb. They are just simply executing simpler commands, not as complicated tasks in one go as mainstream computers. But they still can process information and calculate faster than probably any human being. And as all computers, they are operating in a binary system. So here is your binary course in 90 seconds. In binary, we have two values, 0 or 1, or 0 volt or 5 volts or 3.3 respectively, or low or high, or on or off, or false or true if we're talking about logic. In a wire, you either have electricity or not. The computer uses bytes and bits, but what are those? This is a bit. It's a container. It can have a value of 0 or 1, nothing else. This here is a full byte. It consists of 8 bits. It's like an address in a memory. It can have several values. It can be even fully zeros or fully ones. But how does the computer know what is the value of that byte? Let's think of it as money. The denominations are set. You have, let's say, a coin of 1, 2 and 5 and the bills 10, 20, 50 and 100. And we agree that in your wallet, you can only have one of each denomination at any given moment. So if you have two tens, you have to exchange it to a 20. It's the same with a byte. The denominations are 1, 2, 4, 8, etc. And in every byte, there could be only one of each banknote, so to say. So depending on which one you have one or have none, you add them up and then you know how much you have. So based on that in your wallet or in the byte for the computer, it can be 0 to $255 or whatever currency you are using. This is how a computer knows the value. Now, a few things about the hardware. This is an Arduino Uno. I'm going to use this one for demonstration because it's easy to see the parts. This part is for the power supply unit. The Arduino can be powered from 7 to 12 volts from this port or even from the USB plug. This is the USB section, which is needed for us to be able to program the microcontroller and to get information out of it towards a computer. This section is for feedback LEDs, so we see what's going on. And these are the very important pins for us, the output input pins, where we can interact with the microcontroller and the microcontroller can interact with the world around it. Each pin can be used to supply maximum 20 million current, so an LED and the resistor is fine, but no motors and, and relays. There is a reset button and everything which is left blue, that is actually the microcontroller itself in its most basic setup to function. For the rest of this project, I'm going to use an Arduino Nano, it's a clone, because it's smaller, it's cheaper, the USB and the power supply parts are on the back side of this board, so the top part is pretty neat and clean, it's easy to see. So you see all the digital pins on the top from D12 to D2, from left to right. And the RX and TX pins are actually digital pins 0 and 1, but we are not going to use them because that's the communication port towards the computer. On the bottom there is the D13 on the left. And the A0 to A5 are actually 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So we have usable pins from D2 to 19, which is all in all 18 pins. This is what we are going to use in this project. So the pins D2 to D13 are digital pins, and it, they have uh, several modes. One is output, and the other one is input. When the software sets it to an output pin, then in software, it can be set to high or low, meaning the LED turns on or off. If it's an input, it can measure what is connected to it, but only to the extremities, meaning it measures either zero or one, nothing in between. The analog pins, on the other hand, they operate exactly the same as outputs, so that's clear. Inputs, they can also operate the same as the digital input, but with a special command, they have a specific function that they can measure any voltage between 0 and 5. You are not going to use it today, but it's important to know. 
Today we use all of these pins as outputs and we're just gonna flip them high and low to flash LEDs. An LED has two pins. Uh, the longer one is the anode, that's where the positive goes and the shorter one is cathode. So we are going to connect that to the Arduino. And of course we have to use a limit, current limiting resistor, otherwise the LED would burn up. I'm using one kilo ohm here, but uh, for most of the projects 470 ohm is optimal. So if I turn by the software that D2 pin high, the LED turns on. If I turn it low, then the LED turns off. To get the software, we have to go to arduino.cc. This is where we can download the Arduino development environment. It's a software which helps us to program the microcontroller and it makes it very easy to connect to it. So choose your operating system, download the file. You can donate to the developers. I did it once, so now I'm just going to hit download. Save this file, run it, install the software, say always yes. If you are prompted to install a driver, just say OK, and then it will be fine. When you start your development software, this is what you will see. In the Tools menu, at Boards, you have to choose the board you are connecting. I'm using an Arduino Nano. At the bootloader, usually the cheap Chinese clones use the old bootloader, but you can check both of them. And the COM port where this is connected, in my case, it's COM port 5. Two parts common to every Arduino program, the setup and the loop. The setup runs once, the loop runs over and over again. So in the setup now I'm going to set the mode for that digital pin which I'm going to use. This is the pin mode function. The Arduino reference, which I'm going to show a little bit later, contains information about this function as well. So I'm going to set pin 2 as an output. So now I want to set that pin on and off. How do I do it? I go to the reference, documentation, reference, and I'm looking for digital write. There it is on the left. And you see under is pin mode. You can check that later also. So digital write, it says, it sets a pin high or low. And this is how it's used. Digital write, and then pin and the value. It's either high or low. And here is a nice example, example code also. So let's get back to it and see how it's done. So I say digital write, and W has to be capital, so it's very important. So digital write to, to high, and then I want it to go low, to turn off. So we are fine, right? No, not quite, because if I just upload this, it will do it so fast that I will not see the LED blinking. So I have to introduce a little bit of a delay here, using the delay function. And the, the number between the brackets is actually in how many milliseconds delay I want. So I'm putting in 400 milliseconds of delay. And I'm going to save it as let test. The program doesn't let you to upload any code without saving it. But this is not the most professional way of doing it. So I'm going to show you something to learn it right from the beginning. We learned about bytes, right? So now I'm going to create a byte like a wallet, which I will call LED. And I will give it a value too. So from here on, when I just write LED, there the computer always going to uh, replace it with the number 2. The good thing with this is if I want to change these values, I can only change it there. I don't need to go through the whole code and change it all the time. I can do the same thing for the delay, but because it's a bigger number than 255, you remember, the wallet can ha hold only up to 255. I have to use another type of wallet a different variable is called integer. I'm going to talk about it in a later video. So there I can put that, I give it a name pause and I put it in between there. So it's very easy to do it like this. So I'm uploading the code and then the LED starts to blink. And now I show you how easy it is to change values like this because I'm just using the top section. So I go to pause and I'm just going to change the value of the delay from 400 to 200. I'm going to upload this code and then you will see that the LED starts to blink faster. What if I make it even faster? I'm going to change the delay to 50 milliseconds. That's pretty fast. Let's see what happens when I'm uploading the code. Now that is a proper stroboscope. Of course, the delays can be uh, asymmetric. So I can have it for longer on or shorter on than off. It's feel free to play around with it. Let's check it out like this. Short on time, longer off time. 
then it becomes more like a beacon just giving out a signal or if I take the change the off time to even longer like this it becomes more like those dashboard LEDs in cars showing that the alarm has been activated but anyways we are a little bit more ambition than blinking one LED back and forth we want 18 LEDs blinking with this uh, Arduino Nano so this is uh, the way how I'm going to connect all these 18 LEDs to the board the first 11 is pretty simple as you can see from D2 to D12 from right to left they are just connected one after another and then the next seven is going to be d13 and then the a0 1 2 3 4 and 5 like this from right to left the pins are actually from 2 to 19 and of course the cathodes of the leds need to be connected together and uh, put to ground so that electricity can actually flow note all the one kilo ohm resistors to every LED it's absolutely necessary otherwise they burn up so it's time to put together this uh, whole project when I bought this Nano I got these uh, header pins with it they very often give it to the to the actual module so I'm just going to solder it up because I want to put it in a in a socket on a on a blank uh, proto board it's a it's a prototyping prototyping PCB so I just cut the necessary length of these uh, female headers and I'm going to use this one I already checked that the amount of LEDs can fit nice on the longer edge so I'm just going to solder in the Nano and then uh, ah, doesn't it look good so now I'm checking the LEDs. I check them one by one using the 1K resistor to make sure that they are fine. I don't want to solder them in and then realize that uh, one of them is uh, not working. So here I make sure that all the LEDs are put in to this PCB in a way that the longer leg is towards the microcontroller. So this is how it will look. And now I solder them in all. It's, it's fairly straight. So now I'm just bending the cathodes, the negative pins on the LEDs because they are going to be connected together anyways. So I'm just going to fold them down like this to make a, a common rail there. So I can use only one small short piece of wire. Of course, I'm not going to let leave all those pins. I cut them and then it looks like this. So I think it is time to solder them up. This is my fast soldering method. With practice you can get fast enough. <laughs> and this is how it looks. So now all the negative legs are connected together. And yes, all the LEDs are working. I'm checking it with another 1K resistor. Time to put in the current limiting resistors and connect them up to the pins of the microcontroller. I speed this up very much. I'm using these jumper wires because uh, there's a lot to do so there was like no no space really there this is totally made by the by the connection schematic diagram i showed you earlier this is how it looks and now let's program this so for the 18 leds i had to set all the pins to output this is what i did but it doesn't look too good so let's find a better solution for it reference again your best friend guys if you want to learn coding i have been reading these things for hours in and out it was very good so here at the structure there is something called four and look what it does it repeats a block of statements and closed in the curly braces and increments a number how is it done you actually have to set three parameters one is initialization where it starts where it ends so to say and how does it increment the end is a condition. If it's true, it will do. If, it does, if it's not true anymore, it will not do it. So let's see how I can set this up. So we already have a variable, this LED, and it's set to 2. So I will say, let LED to start from 2 and count all the way up to 19. Basically, it has to be less than 20. So if it's 19, it's still good. If it's 20, it stops. 
and it increments by one, always adding one to the value of LED. But this is not a nice way to writing it. I mean, it's fine, it's working, but there is a better way to make it simply to increment one, one can just write LED plus plus, and then it will increment one. If you want to decrement it, you can just write LED minus minus. This is the way how it usually is done. So I write plus plus. So this, what it will do is set the LED variable first to two, and then three, four, five, all the way to 19, but it will never reach 20. So I will just write pin mode LED output, and then it will repeat 18 times and basically does this section, so I don't need that anymore. Note the curly braces, they have to be in pairs, so that goes with that one and that goes with that one. Anyways, so can I do the same thing for this part, setting high and low these pins? So I give the exact same statements, LED goes from 2 to 19, right? It never reaches 20 and it counts by 1, so it's 18 cycles. So first it sets it high, waits, sets it low and waits. But wait a second, we don't want it to wait, we want it to jump immediately to the next one, so that second delay one is not needed. Now this is going to do it 18 times and it's going to run the LED just in one direction and go back to the beginning. Oops, I made a mistake here, the semicolon is not needed there. So let's see, I'm uploading this code and let's see what the LEDs are doing. Wow, that's exactly what we wanted. That's nice, but it was a little boring, it was a little bit slow. I sped it up. Now it's only 50 milliseconds, this is a little bit better. But wouldn't that be cool if it would bounce from wall to wall, it would go back and forth? Let's see. So we have already this part which does it in one direction. So I'm going to replicate this, but I wanted to do the other direction. So this went from 2 to 19. So we are at 19 now, so then I want the next to be 18 and going down. But how far down? I don't need to go down all the way to 2, because when it goes back to the beginning of the software, it is going to do 2, this first part. So for me, it needs to go down to 3, which is bigger than 2. So LED never reaches 2, it stops at 3, and it is decrementing. So it goes from 2 to 20, and then in the second part, from 2 to 19 and the second part from 18 to 3 and then back to 2 to 19. Oops, I made a mistake. Oh, the curly brackets. You know, they have to be in pairs. So I upload the code and this is what it does. And yes, it goes back and forth. If you remember the old TV series Knight Rider, this is what it is. But let's see what else can we do. Can we make two LEDs bounce back and forth between the walls? So in this first section, of course, I have to have two pins set high and low in the same time. So starting from the two ends. So here I have one which starts from two. So that's good. But then in the same time, I want one which is 19. So two and 19. So 19 would be 21 minus the LED number, because as the LED goes to three, then that 21 minus LED will be 18, so that's how the two ends are going to get closer to each other and then pass each other and go all the way to the other wall. Let me just double check. Yeah, that will be fine. Now, on the other side, so this was actually going all the way to the other wall and now we want the same thing to, to the way back. So we had this already written for loop to go back and that seems to be fine because I exactly want that and I want when it's 18 I want the other one to be 3 so guess what it's very much the same thing 21 minus LED as LED is decreasing so the first pin is going to decrease but the other one is going to increase because the smaller and smaller number is going to be deducted from 21 so this is the code and Let's check it. I'm just going to upload it and look at that. Of course, this code I'm going to publish in the comment section so you can download it for yourself. But uh, that is all for this uh, project, guys. If you like it, uh, press the like button. Stay tuned for more videos. Every Monday, electronics tutorials and on Thursdays, drone-related content is going to come. 
Check out my other videos if you're interested in the subject. If you have anything to say or if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. And please don't forget to subscribe. It really helps out a lot. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.